Hey troops, how you doing? It's been a rough few weeks for a lot of us, hasn't it? There's a lot of stuff going out there in the wide world. Or should I say wild world? The weather's been crazy. A lot of us have been affected by it. If it's not us, it's our friends or our family. We're all checking in on Facebook to make sure everybody's okay. So far, it looks like most are. We're glad, but still, it's been a lot of a, a lot of stress. And while all this was happening, it was like you could hear crickets chirping on Facebook. Everybody was on the edge of their seat. Nobody talking too much, just hoping for the best. Well, looks like most of us dodged a bullet. I'm very, very thankful and grateful for that. <clears throat> but now it's time to shoo those crickets away. Get the crickets out of our heads. No lonesome chirping. It's time to get back with it. And I'm including myself in that because I'll tell you, I've not been the most creative person for a while now. But I'm getting my groove back and I want to tear into it and I want to share some stuff with you. Now what I have for you today is just pretty much ideas. Ideas. Good ideas. Stuff to get you going, get you thinking. Some of the favorite things I like to do, maybe you like to do. And then you'll take them and do them your way. So come on over here and let me show you what I was doing the last couple of days getting back into it. Okay? And maybe you will too. Okay, guys. So I've got several necklaces here that are like finished or in progress. So let's start with the first one that's finished. And I'll kind of show you my thought process and what I did. And some of you know I'm kind of getting into the semi-precious stones. We have a nice assortment of them at bsuperboutiques.com. This is, if I'm, yeah, it's landscape jasper. Landscape jasper. Hobby's shaking her head, yeah, so it must be. She's the one that puts it on the website. Anyway, I love the patterning in this. The way it goes down the side, you know. Every stone is different. No two are alike, so you kind of have to look through what you got and see you know how it goes with the flow of your stuff and I kind of thought that one did a good job of it but anyway I have some new things from the line here that you might not know about yet from Bisu My 1928 I have for example I have this little bit here maybe I'll move this over a little bit it's um it's a little bit hard to see I'll put a few of them there it's a little bit hard to see, but what is this? Like a little dangling branch of flowers and leaves. It's really, really, really pretty. I love it. And then what else I have new is I have this centerpiece, which you can see I've used in this necklace. And you can bend it. People say, can you bend, uh, Peter? Yeah, you can. What's cool about this, because the way that it's bent, it might sit up on the chest a little bit nicer as a focal if you're making a high focal. If it's longer, you're not going to want it this way. You want to bend it up. But if you wanted to make like um, a hand flower bracelet, it, it's like perfect. You don't have to bend it anymore. All you have to do is attach your chain here and your chain going down to your finger and voila, you're, you're good to go. But for this one, I'm doing a necklace. Now, I left it bent on this one because this one is a little bit shorter necklace. Um, just for what the hay, I'm going to bend. I'm going to bend it out so you can see it's not hard. Somebody says, "Oh, I can't do it." Yeah, you can. You just—it's the same as with the brass. You start in the middle and you just start working out and just push gently. It is a little stiffer, but pewter can definitely be bent. Sometimes, and I don't have one down here, you might want to use uh, a pliers that has uh, nylon jaws because it will mark easily. You get a piece of pewter that you kind of want to fix a little bit, you're going to need nylon jaws or they're gonna, it's going to mark real bad. But other than that, you're pretty good. And you can also use the leverage of the table a little bit gently. It just moves, it doesn't move as quickly as brass does, but it'll move. Did he heat it up and bend it?
recommend it? Uh, because that's a good question, Javi. Thank you for asking that. You could, except then you can't handle it because it's too hot. Because it cools off your back restarter, right? So that's not probably going to work. But this is a very good, very good question. Thank you. You keep asking those questions. Help me out. Okay. 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 So anyway, if you wanted to go ahead and, and do something with that, you know, what would you do? Well, you know, it's got all these little cloisons, little s spaces where you could add color. The pewter does really well with paint markers, I've found. The gilt leafing markers work really well with it. And then there's a new marker that I positively love. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm not going to carry them because they're hard to ship and the supply source that I have for them is very, very uneven so I can't guarantee I can even have them. Plus, they're a little bit spendy. Not terribly so. I think they're worth it. But anyway, the Testers Company, T-E-S-T-O-R apostrophe S. If you're as old as me, which is old as the hills, <laughs> you know about the Testers Company because when you were a kid, your brother probably made little model cars that came in kits out of the box from the five and dime. And when you put those model cars together, then you'd want to paint them. And you needed enamel paint to do it. And you used Testers brand paints. They're hobby paints. Not something you see in jewelry making often, but they're starting to show up. They have a nice set of acrylics. I'm nuts about those. And of course, those are non-toxic. But the paint pens are not non-toxic. They don't have huge fumes like some pen markers do, but they they are flammable, so it's going to be difficult for me to ship them to you without doing them UPS or some kind of a special code or whatever. And it's just, I don't I don't ship stuff. I don't ship aerosol and things like that. So you're going to need to look for them in your craft and hobby stores. I hate to send you there, but I don't carry the mixed media colors so much anymore. So, Tester's brand paint markers. They have, uh, I don't know, eight, ten colors. You want to get all of them, especially the metallics. You'll love them. And they're perfect for coloring in. On another video, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring them down because I have them upstairs in the office. I use them a lot. I'll bring them down and I'll demonstrate them. But believe me, you, you, you don't need a demonstration. They, they work like any other paint marker and they're permanent and if you want to seal them, just let them cure real good and hit them with a quick coat, light coat of matte Krylon and, and you're done. That's good. But anyway, you can see this piece will lend to putting color on it very nicely. So anyway, I'm thinking, okay, well, what could I do with this one? Well, I had this piece I did a little while before. This is all the rusty iron, rusted iron, from Bisu by 1928. This is one of the mounts. This is iced enamels under resin, magic gloss resin that I did in the magic gloss UV light. I'm nuts about that, using that with the Visum 1928 because the, the, the bezels are not deep deep. There is a way you can do it with a deep bezel but it's better if it's not. Um, magic gloss is best in thin coats, not deep deep stuff. But anyway, it's great over the ice enamels, and then I embedded an old watch top, old teacher watch down on the bottom of the, in the, into it, so, you know, it's not coming out as it's in there. So, I don't know, I was kind of thinking maybe that will look cool with that. And then maybe on this side, I'll put these, have you seen these yet? We have them left and right. You're probably familiar with the big one that's the centerpiece one. This is the little one. The company made these for us in left and right. So you can make pairs like earrings or you can just use one. I like using them as a clasp. See this how I have this on here? I use that as part of my clasp catch. That's nifty. And it's easy to catch hold of that too because it's a nice big ring. Nice big ring. So there it is in rusted iron. And then I thought mm, maybe I'll take some chain. Maybe this chain. And maybe some of uh, this chain. And you know me, you know how I like to twist my chains. Let's see what happens. Let's just try it, okay? We're just having a fun experimenting video. There's not a whole lot here that 
you guys need to learn. What I'm trying to do is open you up to new ideas. We're going to use brass stampings too. We're going to use. We're even going to use a piece from another necklace that I made a long time ago that I took off because I didn't like how it came out. And I'm going to use it on something else. You're going to like it. Okay, so stay with me because I'm going to talk to you for a while today. This isn't going to be a 10-minute video. Javi's going, oh, Reds, I'm going to go home. Jeez, Aunt Brenda, you didn't tell me that. How long am I going to be here? To 8 o'clock, renting this video? You better be buying pizza. Want me to buy pizza? Sure. Sure. <laughs> she likes her pepperoni pizza. I do like pizza. Yeah. Who doesn't like pizza? Right. Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't, right? Okay, can you, you can see that I put a jump th ring through. Here, let me get my hands in the frame. I put a jump ring through and I joined these two types of very different chain. So now why did I do that? Because I'm going to do this. I'm going to just... Twist it. This is a really long piece, so it's going to be a pin. I should have cut it, but I don't know how long I want this to be, so that would not be smart to cut it yet. And sometimes when you do this, it shortens your chain up too. So you think, oh yeah, I got plenty, and then you find out, uh uh, I messed up. And it's too short, and now you can't do anything with it, and so. I just, if I have a nice long length, I'm going to leave it. So this is um, some chain that I got some from some leftovers from the factory. And uh, not all of it is, but this black stuff is. This is black stuff was from 1920 jewelry. Sometimes I'll get stuff from the old design room, so that's kind of fun. Let me play a little bit. Always fun to play, and I love to share with you whenever I can. Okay, so I'm pretty much at the end of this now, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this off here. Whoops, wrong one. Need flush cutters. Need flush cutters on the site too. I think we only have one pair left, Javi. Why don't you tell me? Sorry. You're supposed to tell me when the tools get low. Anytime the tools get low, or. Uh, what else? Jump rings, head pins, eye pins, and all that. Let me go. You can blame Javi and, and Jordan. Yeah, blame Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, guys, I didn't know those were out. You got to tell me. All I got to do is order them. You got to tell me. Oh, yeah, whoops. Yeah, we had the bag. They threw it in the, in the, in the hopper and forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot. I went to put ink in my printer this week. And how he was going to put it in for me, and she forgot, but that's okay, not a big deal. I, I'm a big girl, I can do it. So you can see I twisted this all. This is cool, let me just shut up and show you how this, cool this is. Is that showing, honey? See, that's beautiful how that twisted. Two fine chains twisted. It gives you a little bit of oomph because this is a heavier piece. You don't want to put a little ditzy chain on this, but a couple little ditzy chains um, wound together is not a bad idea. Not at all. So the thing is, is it's going to stay that way. Sometimes it will come loose and sometimes you got to take it and every so often put uh, a jump to hold it. But I don't know, I think this would be okay. We did this in a video before, you might recall. And that piece sold pretty quick. <laughs> sold pretty quick. Here's the deal on this. In our design video today, we're designing. We're designing this, and these are things you'll find. This is going to be too long. You don't want a piece like this hanging like halfway down your belly. You know, if you're going to have a long piece on like a 30-inch chain or whatever, then it needs to be a pendant type thing that's going to hang free. This is not not good that long. This should be like. 20 inches max. That's my opinion. And this is more than 20, let me tell you. So I need to reconnect it. So how I'm gonna it should be, I think, about like that. Maybe even like this. Yeah. Probably like that. Would be even better if you measured it. <laughs> 
Where's my ruler whenever I want it? It's never here. I'm going to I'm going to put it back together right here. There's a yardstick. Where? Over there, but it's nailed down. Oh, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, yardsticks work. All right, so how long do I have this now? Who wants to guess? Who says it's 20? Not even. <laughs> Let's make it 18. 18 with an extender. Is always good. 18 with a two inch extender, you can't hardly fail. Thanks, Javi, for remembering that was over there. We have them all over the place, but a lot of them tend to be um, taped. taped or nailed down <laughs> because if not, they walk away. <laughs> it's just the way it is. That's how things go around this place. So how are things around your place? Thinking about getting something done? I want a smaller one. This is too big. Are you having any shows this, this uh, fall? I bet you are. You know, if you got shows coming up, it can't be sitting around on your hands. You know, I've given you that, that lecture how many times? <laughs> do I need to do it again? I was reading today a lot of stuff about uh, wholesaling lots of jewelry because it has changed a lot since I did it. And I did a lot of it. I was, I didn't get rich and I wasn't a household name, but I sold a ton of jewelry to many, many store accounts. And it, the whole process has changed. I don't even know if I should teach the build a line class anymore because it's changed so much. But hey, I can catch up. I'm gonna learn. Anyway, I have no idea what I was saying or why I said that. Okay, so here's um where I'm gonna twist it a little bit more. And I am going to attach it in the front. Okay. in the front. I'm just going to go down here. I may have to go back here and work on this because it's, you know, because I didn't twist it as I put it together. It's now not cooperating. But you get the point. You see how it's done. You're smart. You've been making jewelry. And nothing I do is rocket science anyway. You know what? To make jewelry, nothing does have to be rocket science. You can see all this hard stuff, and you see people doing all this complicated stuff, and it's wonderful. You know what? If you want to learn those things, go take some classes by all means. Yeah, that's kind of hard. Don't worry about it. We're gonna, I'll get that later. Anyway, go take some classes and learn. It can never hurt. Never. I think I want to do it this way. I don't know, it may change my mind, because doing it upside down, you just never can tell. But, I'm going to put it that way, and then I'm going to put my cusp on there. But, the fact is, is if you don't have money to take those kind of classes, well, you can learn, learn a lot on YouTube, that's for sure. It's amazing what they have on here, even just since I started doing I started doing YouTube seven and a half years ago. So I always say, if you go back through my videos, you can watch me age. Because it's the truth. <laughs> but you can learn anything on here. But taking a, a physical live class, there's just a lot to be said for that. You can go learn the complicated stuff, but you don't have to to make jewelry. A lot of people are very, very successful making lines of jewelry that are handmade and they're not complicated. But some people really would prefer a less complicated look. Now this jump is a little big for here, don't you think? I do. But I don't have one in the right color family to put here, so for now, for the sake of just seeing how it looks, I'm going to use that one. 
I would definitely use a smaller one, probably six millimeter. Anyway, cute. Just got to fix the chain, which I will do later. But then I thought maybe just for fun, I might put that on. I don't know. I may not leave that on either. But, you know, that's the thing about brainstorming. You show people, you know, if you're nice about it, you can put your comments, you can put your ideas right in the um, comments here on this video. I, I love to talk to you that way. Just be nice to me. That's all I ask. Some people, unfortunately, think that just because <clears throat> they can, they should. And no, they shouldn't. You have to be nice. I'm sure just about anybody can make a video better than I can, but I'm happy to show you how to do what I do for free and give you some ideas. So if you don't mind hanging out with me, then hang. And then you can tell me your ideas and we'll talk about it in the comments section of the video. Okay, so I just slipped a few little beads on there because I, it's such a big jump ring. So I thought maybe that would relieve it a little bit. But anyway, there you go. Not so bad. Let's see where it's going to fall. Yeah, this falls just about right. 18 inches and then with the drop, it's just at the right place on me. So I'll put it, you know what, I'll put it on a mannequin later and I'll take a quick snapshot of it after I get this stuff, this chain retwisted the way it's supposed to be and I'll put it maybe um, on my feed at Facebook and maybe during the next few days I'll show some of these at Instagram. Come follow me at Instagram at Lisa Boutiques. Putting a lot of pretty pictures on Instagram. So anyway there's an idea. After we fix the chain it's going to be handy dandy. I like it. It's an idea. You know, it's all I always say no bad ideas, just ideas. There's ideas that work, ideas that don't work, ideas that might work. I, yeah, there's some yeah, there's some bad ideas. <laughs> but not really, not not usually. You know, it's just as far as creativity, you know, as long as you're being safe uh, and not wasting. Sometimes you have to waste stuff in order to come up with something new. Okay. So here's something I got started this morning you're going to like. Remember the geisha? Well, this time, I did her on the big plaque. And that plaque is B-R-I-R-O-N-03427 in rusted iron brass. And as you can see, our rusted iron brass matches rusted iron pewter exactly. I've done the same way. And all I did was I came down here and I drilled a hole here, a hole here, and a hole here. And I have a little bit of glue mess, I see, where it ran. When you put the geisha on something, she's very, very hollow in the back. And so you're going to have cleanup with her when you put her on something because the glue will tend to seep out a little bit. But honestly, if that's all that came out, that was pretty blame good. You have to, just telling you a little glue, glue tip, when you put the geisha on a plaque or something else, um, you have to pretty much fill, let me see, I've got one here, I can show you. Yeah, I have one of those. The geisha, uh, if you want to find her on the site, we have a few, well, we've got quite a few left, B-R-I-R-O-N-0680, and she's a favorite. But you can see she's very, very hollow in the back. So what I do when I put the glue, I put the glue on the, all the flat places and I put it around down here and then I kind of have to fill up the head cavity pretty good. And it takes a lot of glue. Set that aside and then on the plaque, which I didn't bring another one down here. I think. On the plaque part, wherever this is going to rest, so I'll put it all under there on contact spots so that the glue will glue to glue. <laughs> the glue will glue to glue. Anyway, get her on there. So, and then you got to leave it sit for good, uh, probably three hours or so before you're going to do anything with it because it won't be set up good enough to where it will be set up good enough that you can handle it and work with it. Okay. So, to that, I added another little flower and I put a little rosemary tea in there I glued down in. And 
because I had to use such big jumps because I had to drill down in here to get a flat place. So I had to go into the, pl the plaque pretty far to do that. So I used pretty big jumps on this. They're probably mm, 12 millimeter, 13 maybe. I just happened to have them down here in a workshop. So to them, to add some texture, I put some of these little brass ox beads. We tend to have a variety of things like this. I love the little nitty gritty pieces that you can add to a place, piece that add to them. So then I made a tassel for her. And as you can see, I'm starting to load the bottom of the tassel. I'm going to have little things hanging on each of these pieces. This chain, I did not get the number for you, but we have it on the website. And it's a two-tone chain. It's a gold and black diamond cut chain. This piece is really cool. It's like a dome. Perfect, perfect, perfect for making tassels. This is an Obisu by 1928 line. See if I can find it. Hmm. Bead cap. Yeah. P I R O N 04202. That would be for the rusted iron. We have it in the old silver and we have it in gingerbread too. All these new pieces that I'm showing you, we have it in all the colors and good stock too so you can come and grab some so I took and I made my tassel and if you want to know how to do tassels if you want to go back in time there's a long video on making tassels in fact it was the first one that Javi taught and she was so shy who would ever believe that she would come down here and make a video all by herself now but she does once in a bit she does so anyway I'm, th I'm liking this and this is going to hang kind of long She's going to be kind of a pectoral piece. She'll lay around the middle of the chest, and then the, the tassel will come down long. I've made a lot of pieces like this. I enjoy them. People like them. They buy them. So if you make one, I'm sure you'll sell it too. But anyway, to finish this, this one up, I took this nice chain. It's a work chain. Not a work chain. It's work, duh. Pieced. And I thought, it wasn't doing any justice to the thing I had it on. The thing I had it on was really a thing. It was like, what is this? But you'll have that. It happens. So, in order to get this to match up, I think I've need, I need to take, just brainstorming it. I want to get, when it goes on to the piece, I want to get it so, let me pull this down here, so that the, the beads all match up. They're across from each other. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to take a little bit off down here because there are too many links. I've got three links, and I've got like six on this one. So I'm going to take it off right here, and then we should pretty much solve that problem. So here I go. One, two, three. Let me pull this back so it doesn't get on on me. Always point down when you do that, and then... It doesn't tend to go flying through the air. Okay. So now, all I have to do is put them on. Now, I put these beads on because those are great big old jumps and I wanted some ornamentation on them. So now, I've got some big jumps set aside in matte black. I love matte black. We aren't carrying a lot of stampings in matte black. We have some that are on clearance in the vintage warehouse, but um, we are going to have bead caps and jumps and chains and stuff like that because it just it's a really good blending color. There's a bunch of colors and there's brass ox on this, there's rusted iron, there's black, matte black, all kinds of colors. Okay, I'm going to get this on. You want to get that perfectly flat. But see, <clears throat> if I just put this one on, it just looks kind of weak because this is, you know, heavy chain. So, what I do in a case like that is I tend to double double jump ring it. If you want to use a split ring, <clears throat> that works too. I'm I'm not crazy about split rings. They're really, really secure, especially when you're making like um, something heavy or you're making a charm bracelet. But I just don't like the look of them. That's me. And I don't like messing with them. For me, they're clumsy. Some people are pros at them. There is a tool that you can get. We don't carry it anymore because we don't carry many split rings. But um, I just prefer a double jump ring. I'm probably doing it the hard way, but I just like the look of it better. 
don't know what's the difference, right? Okay, so I got that side on, and now I'm going to do the other side. And of course, I won't get all my little beads hanging off the bottom of the of the tassel, you know, during our time together today. But um, you're going you're gonna to see the gist of it, and then I'm going to take it upstairs and and finish it while hubby's rendering the video, and then I'm going to take some really nice pictures with my phone and put them on Facebook and Instagram. So you can see them that way. And see how it all came out in the end. And then you can be thinking about, hmm, what would I do different? Because, you know, there's always another way. And quite possibly, your way will be a better way. Because the one thing I know for sure in this world is how much I don't know. And that's why we love our creative group at Facebook because we bounce off each other's ideas. No one critiques anybody, we just share ideas. Okay, clumsy Brenda, which way do you have? You know what? I'm going to go this way. Now, sometimes I hesitate to do video much anymore too because uh, my hands shake a little bit. They always have my whole life. I don't have any afflictions that I know of yet, but besides drinking too much coffee, you just always shake. And being honest, I don't see quite as well as I used to, so I have to you know, look carefully. But there are magnifiers for that. I probably better get myself some. But anyway, you can see how that went. So now is this going to match up? It's not in the whole frame here. Let me pull her up here. Get up here, girl. <laughs> so when I hook it, this is this would be your extender right here. This part. I like to always put extenders on my stuff, no matter how long it is. I just do. Because you never know, maybe somebody wants a little more room. And also, you know, when you make the jewelry like this, gypsy style beading, this is what I always call it, I may have called it something else now, but you've got all these jumps going up the sides, and you can always hook there too if you want it a lot shorter. Look at this. See, you give your customer options. You make it a lot shorter because now you got this thing hanging. This is why I always put a finial, an end bead with a little bit of ornament on the bottom of it because maybe if it's going to hang down and hang down your neck or whatever, you know, at least it'll look good. Now that's probably a little too short. It's probably going to look a little clumsy, but you could hook it maybe here and it would just hang sideways or down their neck. Yeah, but the best way would be right here. See, this is stuff that you don't talk about in videos a lot. Like, why, why should you do this? Or why would this be better? How does it work out if you do this and you do that? But there she is. I think she's looking pretty good. So I'll finish her up and show you a little bit more. One more thing. Just one more, that's all. Because this one's going to be real food for thought. Okay. A lot of people have been after me to get this blank back in stock. Is it in the frame? Yeah. Okay, it is B-A-S-E, base. B-A-S-E, 028. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> that's a guitar brick blank. That doesn't help you. Well, go to the blanks, you'll find it. Maybe I'll find it and tell Hobby. That's what I'll do. I'll find it and I'll tell Hobby so she can put it on there. Anyway, if y'all like this one, you know we've been out of it for a bit. We're not now. We have a lot of them. So I got it in and I thought, hmm... What could I do with that? Change it up. Because a lot of people like this. I'm going to be honest with you. Not my favorite thing. But people like it. So I get it. Alright. Fine. So this is what I did this morning. And I'm not by any means done. Okay. I took it. And I heated it with a torch. And then while it was hot. I took my t copper tongs. Put it over on my bench block. And I banged it up pretty good with a texture hammer and then I while it was still warm I put uh, swelling and darkening patina all over it and if you're familiar with that product it will turn something dark like right now which that's what I love about it because you have instant gratification with it so I did that and cleaned it up still wooled it shined it up a little bit so that I could see some of the integrity of the brass again but yet the product would be down into the crevices to give it some dimension and a little bit of contrast. 
And then, of course, I sealed it with Krylon Matte Spray Lacquer. Okay. Before I get any of that, though, it, it comes, as you can see, it comes with two holes. It doesn't come with these three at the bottom. So I took it and put it on my bench block, and I dinged it, took it up under my drill press, which I won't show you how I use it because people will object. <laughs> but I made three holes in it. You could use your hole punch, too. That would probably work, so long as you ding it really good. You might want to ding it with a nail if you're going to use a hole punch, so that will be halfway through by then. And I made three holes, and then I had this, this cool leftover beaded chain, this Chuck beaded chain, and so I put about 20 inches around, and then with what was left, I thought I would do a asymmetric waterfall effect. So now i got to hang a little finial bead in the bottom of these. I have some little black check beads. Maybe I'll put them on. That'll look good. But the problem is, you, for me, maybe not you. Maybe you'd say, okay, you're done. That's it. But for me, I don't want to lose all this. I want some to show, but it just needs something. So I determined that I would take this mount from BC by 1928. This is the rusted iron. And I would take this piece out. Let me just take it out right now so I can show you what I'm talking about. So these are all just design dilemmas that we're talking about get your juices going. Start a new project. You could end up doing something completely different than what we're doing here. And that'd be fun. If we got you started doing, we're happy. Okay, so this guy, I'm going to take and I'm going to cover that hole. And then I'm going to hang it from that. So I'll just go ahead and put it on. So I solved that problem because if you put this on over it, it's it's going to obstruct the movement of the jump ring and also the mount's not going to lay flat. So that won't be good. But this way it will. So let's just cover that hole. As I just discovered I don't need it. Okay? So I'm going to put that on there. You get it nice and even and centered. I can't tell if it is, but you know when I finish this I will. Okay. So now you've got your desired effect. You still got the you know some of your hammered look showing. I took a piece of this awesome leopard skin jasper. Now you might like something else in it, but I love leopard skin jasper. I'm just nuts about it. So I think when this is finished, that's going to look pretty sweet. And of course we carry leopard skin jasper and landscape jasper and pink dyed coral and Chinese turquoise and African turquoise and amethyst and we have some malachite in this size 25 by 18 now we have blue lace agate what else we got Javi? We we get the epi rose quartz yeah the rose quartz the rose quartz yeah we have epidot oh man we got we a have lot. A lot. howlite white yes. howlite with the black meaning which is a lesser expensive uh, stone but it's really cool with the contrast we have black onyx now there's just a lot we just got a huge consignment batch in and uh, there's some really nice stuff in there and very reasonable so you need to come over and look okay so there you go how about that all these new ideas I'm just have to take and glue it down when I glue this down I'm going to use a toothpick too because I don't want glue coming out everywhere probably what I'll do is I'll glue that mount down first and then I'll set the stone and it'll go better for me. Okay, so I've got this one that's all finished. Now about this this thing hanging off the here, see, I decided it would be cool to put a little piece of the gold chain in there and the rest of the copper ball chain. So now I've got this one um, jump there and I thought it would be cool to put a little fluff of something. But I'm going to have to go upstairs and put it on and look and see if it looks like a piece of chewing gum stuck on there. Hanging <laughs> it off for just a blob, you know, or if it looks right. I kind of like the idea of it, but when I, when I put it on, it, it may not look that good, so we'll see. This, this is it. You know, you, you put it together, you put it on, you see, ah, is this in the right place? Is that the right one? And then I'm going to fix the chain on this. That's my chore to do and get this all going right. But you can see where I was going with it. 
And then this one, I love. I love this. I haven't made one of these in so long. I've made them every which way. I'm just going to get some stuff on the bottom, let it dry, figure out if there's any other changes, and it'll be ready to go. So there you go. Four new ideas. Are you ready to rumble? I am. I can't wait to get upstairs and finish these. Hobby says, I can't wait for you to go up and call a pizza guy. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Maybe you want to call the pizza guy. Only one thing. is when you're eating the pizza, don't be using E6000. Okay? <laughs> don't forget your mama told you. Okay. Very good. You all have a wonderful week. And I'm hoping I can get back with you one more time before my trip out to California again to work at the factory. I, I really want to get back to doing these videos like every week, every two weeks. We need to get on the stick, all of us. Be Sue included. So, off you go. Have a great day. Love you. Bye.